Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm doing a tag video that I'm actually super excited to do ever since I saw when it first came out. This tag is created by Katie Marie here on YouTube, and it's the perfect subscriber tag. So if you haven't seen this tag before, essentially it's all talking about whether or not YouTube creators make good YouTube subscribers. And I thought that was fascinating and I love the questions and I can't wait to get into it. So I'm gonna have Katie's channel and her original video linked down below. I'm also going to have Amy's video from Dolly Mama Beauty linked down below because I also saw that she did it fairly quickly afterwards and I really loved all of her answers. So make sure you check out both of those original videos. There are 13 questions in this tag, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Question number one is, do you subscribe right away when you find a new channel or video or do you try a few videos first? I I feel like my subscription feed has gone through a lot of changes. When I first started out YouTube, I would like subscribe to everyone that did beauty because I had no idea what I was doing and I was looking for just anything. So I subscribed to a lot of people and then I realized I wasn't really watching anything in my subscription feed. So I cut down a lot of my subscriptions and then the pendulum turned and I really didn't have a lot to watch. So then the pendulum went the other way. So right now, if I see a channel or if I see anyone that I might be interested in or if someone recommends me a channel, what I'll do is I'll go look at their channel first, put two or three videos on my watch later list so I can actually sit down and pay attention to them because I don't want to watch a new person like in the background or when I'm not really paying attention. So what I'll do is I'll put them on when I can actually pay attention to them. So I add a couple videos to my watch later. So if I look at my watch later list and I see I have three videos in a row, by the same creator that I don't really know, then that means I found that channel and I should probably pay attention to those videos. So then I'll watch all of those and if I like the three videos that I picked from their channel, then I'll subscribe. I don't like to subscribe based on like one video or just looking at their channel real quick. I like to actually do a deep dive and see whether or not the content is what I would be interested in and would be interested in following along with. Question number two really made me think. So question number two is does the make sure you subscribe mantra ever sway you to actually subscribe and i sat back and thought about this and no not really it's the content that makes me subscribe so i like personally so i went back and i thought about why i ask everyone to subscribe at the beginning of the video and for me it was because i had no idea how to open a video that, that was the sure simple thing. If you go back and look at like my first 10 videos, I, I'm so awkward and I have no idea what to say. And so I was literally copying the bigger creators, the larger creators and what they said at the beginning of the video. And also if you go to like the, um, the YouTube recommended or whatever, YouTube recommends that you ask everyone to subscribe and like the video and hit the bell in every video. But honestly, like as a YouTube watcher, that does nothing for me. Like what I really do like is when I see like a little bubble pop up that says, please subscribe if you like this, but when they don't say it out loud. So this really got me thinking and I'm gonna try to do my best to stop doing that spiel at the beginning of each video because it doesn't really persuade even me to do it. And I, I kind of think it's a waste of time now that I'm more comfortable in front of the camera. Like before it used to be a crutch, like, oh, this is how you open up the video and then you can actually start. But I don't need that to open a video anymore. So I think I'll keep my cute little like animation because I worked really hard on that. I actually made that. <laughs> um, so I'll probably keep that, but I'm gonna try to do my best from now on to cut that like intro. Make sure you subscribe. Because I, I cut out first the hit the bell notification because the, even if you hit the bell, apparently notifications are hit or miss whether or not they'll actually go out, which is a bit concerning. So I stopped saying that, so I need to just stop that. I think I'll say at the end of the video, if you like to give it a thumbs up, but that's at the end. So I th I'm, I'm working, I'm personally working on that. Question number three is how many channels do you have the notification bell turned on for? So really only a handful. I have like my close YouTube friends. I keep the bell on for like um, Dolly Mama Beauty. I have the bell. I have the bell for Rare Beauty Envy. I have the bell for Christina Chang. I love her channel. I have the bell for, um, I'm trying to think, a couple other small YouTuber that I would consider, I don't know if I'm going out of the way to call them friends, but I consider them friends. So those type of creators I have the bell on for. And then when it comes to larger creators, I only have the bell if I watch literally 
every video that they put out. So off the top of my head, Taylor from the Taylor, I have the bell on for her because I watch every single video. When it comes to other be larger beauty creators, she's the only one that I watch. So that's really the only one. Everyone else that I have the bell on for is an ASMR channel. I love ASMR. I listen to it every night before I go to sleep. I have a list, like a playlist, several playlists of all my favorite ASMR videos that I will listen to before I go to bed or as I'm falling asleep every night. So I have the bell on for my favorite ASMR channels. So I've got um, Ephemeral Rift. I have the bell on. I have the bell on for um, a Maria, Gentle Whispering. I have the bell on for Fred's voice. Uh, so those are among my favorite channels and I have the bell on for them because the minute I see they have a new video I'll like listen to the first few minutes and then add it to my ASMR playlist so I can listen to it as I'm going to sleep The next question is do you watch every video from your subscription feed or only your favorites? So I've mentioned before how like my subscription feed has gone through a lot of changes and now the last change that I make was when I really pared down my subscription feed to what I was only watching, like everything, I didn't have enough to watch. I And I never wanted to be in a position because YouTube is my main form of entertainment. Like I don't watch TV. I don't really watch anything else other than movies if I go to the movie theater and YouTube. That's it. So I really wanted to make sure I had a steady stream of content to actually pay attention to and watch. So I follow a lot more channels now and I always make sure I've got plenty to watch. But in that, I don't watch every video in my subscription feed because I, I wouldn't have the time for that. So what I do is go through my subscription feed once, twice a day and add anything that I'm interested in to my watch later. Or if it's something I'm like, really super interested in I'll watch right away but for the most part if I'm at work or if I'm laying in bed waking up I'm not gonna watch it right then I would say 80% of the videos I'm interested in I add to my watch later so I would say I watch about a 60 to 70% of the videos in my subscription feed but not a hundred percent channel or question channel. question number five is how many channels do you never miss an upload for no matter how busy you are so I was a bit confused by this does it mean that like the minute they upload I jump and watch it or is it a channel where I watch every video I, I, I won't drop everything to watch a video the minute it comes out unless I'm literally like getting ready for work and I have the time to do that that rarely happens except for uh Teresa is dead I love her channel so much I had the bell I also have the bell on for her a smaller creator that I consider a friend that isn't really I don't know her but I love her videos <laughs> and she posts she's been posting recently super early in the morning so I can actually like watch them the minute they come out so if it's the question geared that way then the answer would be one channel Teresa is dead but for everyone else, like, the only few channels that I watch every video of are, like, my close YouTube friends, and uh, the bigger one is the Taylor. I think I've mentioned that several times, and then my ASMR channels. So kind of the same answers as uh, one of the previous questions. Question number six is, what kind of commenter are you? Okay, so this one really got me thinking. What I like to do is watch a video and actually comment on the content or on whatever catches my eye. So I will watch the whole video and then after the video is done, comment. If something really like piques my interest, like if I'm watching a video and like someone's shirt is really pretty or if I really love their hair or something, I'll comment that and then finish the video and then come back and comment. Rarely will I comment more than twice. I'm not like a serial commenter, but I do like to comment on uh, each video that really intrigues me. Question number seven is, do you skip ads or watch ads? So this one, I actually have YouTube Premium. I think it's what they called it. it. used to be YouTube Red, now it's YouTube Premium. So I pay about $12 a month to get no ads. I did that because, as I said before, I love ASMR videos. And I would get panic attacks when I would have a playlist going and I would be laying in bed, like literally asleep. And I would have my sleep phones on and in the middle of all my playlist videos, a loud, loud ad would come on and wake me up. And I would wake up like in a panic and freak out for the next few minutes and then would not be able to go back to sleep. That, I hate that because most ASMR videos, you have to have your volume all the way up or most of the way up to get them and you have to be wearing headphones. 
So that's really the main reason I got it. But since I do have it, I don't see any more ads on YouTube and I actually really like that. But that means that no matter what video I watch, the creator will get a little bit more payment or CPM for that watch because it is a YouTube premium watch versus a regular watch, which I've, I've noticed that as a creator, they do separate out your views from your regular views to your YouTube premium view. So whenever I watch someone, they get a full YouTube premium view. Question number eight is, do you speed up videos? No, I try. Like, because my boyfriend, he loves podcasts. He'll listen to podcasts in the car when he's at work, constantly listening to the podcasts. And he listens to them double the speed. So whenever I'm in the car with him, I'll try to follow along with the podcast. And like, I, I struggle because <laughs> sometimes they speak so fast, I can't. Like, it's too fast for me to really follow up with, especially if they're going into an in-depth topic and I'm coming in halfway through the podcast. When it comes to my videos that I watch on YouTube, I... YouTube's like my happy place. YouTube is my relaxing place, so I don't want to rush through someone's video like that. I really do like to take the time to sit down, relax, watch the video. Sometimes my watch later will be dozens of videos, but... If it takes me longer to get to a video, I'd rather take longer to get to a video and give it the full attention it deserves than to kind of rush through it. But that's just mean how I digest content. Question number nine is, do you click affiliate links or use affiliate codes? Honestly, the affiliate links, I really don't understand still fully. I, I've never bought anything straight from affiliate links because I don't like to impulse buy like that. If it's something that I'm really interested in, I will look up the product myself, bookmark it, do some more research, look up some more reviews. I've, I've never been one to go into the description box of a video and immediately buy a product. So I've never really done that, but I do use affiliate codes. If I'm actually going to go to a website after I've done my research and I know I want to buy something, if I know I'm going to get something, I will try to look up a code from a smaller-ish YouTuber to use. So like just recently, I placed a, um, not recently, but a few weeks ago, I placed a Juvia's Place order and I know Angelica Neekfist has a code with Juvia's Place. So I went to her channel, found that code, and then I used that in my order. So little things like that I will try to do. I will definitely try to use smaller, like under 100,000 subscriber YouTuber codes, as opposed to the big, YouTubers that have like 30 codes in their description box. Yeah, I won't really do it for them. But smaller creators, under 100, under 50k, definitely I will do my best to do that once I've already made the decision to purchase the product. Question number 10 is what is your preference when it comes to video length? What is your sweet spot? So personally, I find any video between like 10 and 16 minutes. Like, that's like the perfect video length for me. It's just right there. If it's less than 10 minutes, I feel like it, it goes a little too fast and I don't really have time to like relax and then I'm already picking out the next video I have to watch. If it's more than 16 or 20 minutes, I still watch them if I'm interested, but it's not something that I'd be able to get to in a reasonable amount of time, if that makes sense. Because I really need to, like I said before, the way I like to watch videos, I have to block out that amount of time to watch the full video. Question number 11 is, do you thumbs up most videos? Yeah, if I watch a video and I like the content, I like the person, I, I thumbs up the majority of the videos that I do watch. And it also helps like improve my recommendations too. I've gotten some awesome recommendations from YouTube based on like what I actually watch and like and thumbs up. Question number 12 is, do you ever thumbs down a video? Yeah, it's not often, but I do. It's most, for the most part, in cases where I see, like, hidden sponsorships are what really get to me. Like, if it's a 20-minute video and they've been using the same products throughout the video and you're like, this kind of sounds scripted, I don't know, but they didn't say anything and I don't see anything at the beginning of the subscription box or the description box. Um, and then you get, like, to minute 17 of a 20-minute video and then they go, oh, thank you to blah 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 for uh, sponsoring this video. That feels cheap to me. I don't like that. If you're doing a, a sponsorship, make sure that you disclose it at the beginning of the video so that we are well informed that everything you're telling us is through a biased lens because that's exactly what a sponsorship is. The company is paying you to talk well about the product. 
So I need to know that before I listen to your opinions on that product. If you do that, there have been several sponsored videos that have still gotten me interested in products as long as I even knew it beforehand that it was sponsored. If you do your best to hide the fact that it's sponsored, nah that really gets under my skin. So I will thumbs down those videos. If I see either, even if it's not mentioned in the video and I look very down in the description box and I see at the bottom it's sponsored, or they mention it at the end of the video, that'll get me to thumbs down a video. But that being said, I really don't do it that often. It's just when something like that really gets to me. All right, and the last question is question number 13. Do you share other YouTubers videos on your social media? So I really do my best to share um, smaller creators and share my other YouTube recommendations on YouTube because it is my biggest platform. I have a Twitter. I have 17 followers on Twitter. <laughs> it is tiny. I have a bigger following on Instagram, but really that Instagram is more of a personal one that I will post makeup to occasionally, but it's not fully makeup. So I know the people that follow me there, the majority of them aren't watching YouTube on make like YouTube videos, YouTube videos on makeup words. So I think the best way for me to do that and to recommend people to a larger audience is to do it through my biggest platform, which is YouTube. So I do my best to do collabs, recommend channels, mention them, throw their videos up in the cards, because that's the best way that I know that I can get my recommendations out to the largest audience. So those are all the questions. This tag really got me thinking and I loved it. So thank you, Katie Marie, for making up this tag. I had a whole lot of fun really thinking through everything and I'm just really excited. I hope if you guys like this video, you'll give it a thumbs up and let me know if you guys want to see more tags. I literally have a list of like a bajillion tags in my Google Doc that I really wanted to do but have not gotten around to. So if you want to see more tags, maybe even make like a Tag Tuesday or a Tag Thursday, let me know if you guys would like to see that in the comments below and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye!